Hey folks, welcome to the Hack Shack. In today's video, we're gonna be showing us installing next step on that Spark Station 5 that we resurrected in the previous video. Had one little small glitch, but thanks to the internet, we were able to get through that with no trouble. Hope you enjoy. So the first thing I went to do was I went to archive.org and got the ISO for the next step risk version. It works for the uh, HP and Spark. I grabbed that so I could put it on my SD card to uh, use the SCSI to SD. If you look here, I made two devices. The first I made the CD-ROM. The second I made like a two gig empty hard drive. Notice the area to the right there. You'll see me circle in a second. This is what will get you if you want to use a SCSI to SD with next step. You have to change these heads uh, and cylinder things here from the default or next step will refuse with an error that I'll show you later here. And just to be clear, what you have to do is uh, set your options up like you're going to get ready to push these to the SCSI to SD device. But then what you do is you go like basically to file and save, kind of like you're exporting those uh, settings. You save an XML file then you want to open that file and you edit that file to look like what was in the uh, uh, screenshot there. And I'll have a links uh, for you to see those values as well. Then after you edit that, then you push that back to the SCSI to SD card, then you'll be good to go for your um, hard drive device uh, on the SD card to work okay with the next step. Oh, before I forget, I need to give a big shout out to, I think it's uh, this hit link I found at uh, blog.pizzabox.computer, uh, Sophie Haskins Project, which also has a great YouTube channel. But uh, this is where my Googling led me to find the fix for the installation error I had um, the first time I tried to do next step here. So just wanted to give a big thank you to them. Once I got my SD card sorted out and put that into the SCSI to SD card, I was able to stick that into the spark and attach it, you know, to the SCSI cable and the power cable. And I was ready to turn things on and give the install a go. Now what you may notice here when I'm firing this up, I had disconnected or pulled the sled out for the you know, the original hard drive that still had Solaris on it. So it was trying to net boot. So I had to do like stop A and uh, do boot CD-ROM. And uh, if you notice in the previous screen, that's why I'd set the device to six because that's kind of what by default this thing wants. Um, there I'm doing the dash V for the verbose and, uh, messages. And uh, I'm hitting one here, I believe, for language to tell it to go ahead. And basically saying one here to tell it to take off and it starts loading up here it's kind of cool in a second unlike all the Solaris stuff you'll see it kind of flip to uh, it'll invert the colors here in just a minute which was kind of neat during the install there it goes this message that says preposterous time just always cracks me up when I see it preposterous time Now, right about here is when, when I did it the first time, I got a message like the one I've got overlaid here. Um, the disk is initialization failing. And uh, that was due to the needing to make those differences in the um, those settings that I mentioned earlier in the uh, XML file that we had to push back to the SCSI to SD. But in this one, you can see it uh, keeps on trucking here and installs and I've got this way sped up because it was not nearly this fast but uh, I'll try to speed it up but uh, leave it going so you can see that uh, it was going I did my hand there in front of the screen um, just to make sure this autofocus was working and I didn't mention it yet but uh, sorry yeah this is a camera pointed at the screen I had uh, purchased a thing to split out VGA to HDMI and uh, VGA pass through and thought I could capture this output with one of my HDMI capture cards but I think the um, funky spark resolution did not want to cooperate with that. So that's why this is kind of lame, but um, I think it worked okay. So here you can see the first part of the installation is completed and I've hit the button to tell it to reboot. And I never set the, like the auto boot stuff here 
So I, each time I basically had to break it and uh, tell it to boot from uh, disk two. Now, since we were done with the CD, there's a couple of things popped up there basically. And then here's where I'm deselecting some languages and telling it to uh, which remaining packages to install. So it's kind of going to go fly through that. Okay, you can see here where I was rebooting after those packages installed. And I'm uh, going to have to do the stop A because it's going to try to net boot because the main hard drives. So I just say boot disk 2, hit enter there, and uh, it's going to boot up into the normal kind of desktop here in just a second. I think I had to pick the language there. And then, yep, here we go. So here I just goof around for just a little bit and uh, mess around with some stuff. This is still sped up. It didn't do it this fast, but uh, I'm just goofing around a little bit, kind of, you know, wow, this is something I'd wanted to check out for quite a while. Didn't have it on the network yet, but I hope to maybe do that uh, and s do some messing around later, but uh, it's working and it's it's pretty darn cool. So uh, yeah, there it is. I was trying to see if some kind of Unix commands worked on here, like the D message or something like that, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to have ping or, or some of the common things. I'm not sure if those are extra packages or I need to do a little more research now that I've got this installed. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the video and we hope to get something out neat for you to watch again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.